hate this game, man. Oh my god, okay, Wolva. But, um, what are you talking about? We want to make... Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to Too Much Tech and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Roquette Burst Pro. This is Roquette's new lightweight mouse featuring their Titan optical switches, new PTFE feet, and a pretty good, P uh, not PTFE obviously, but a pretty good paracord in my opinion. Huge shout out to Roquette actually for sending out this mouse for review. I was really excited to try it as soon as I seen it to see that they finally had a lightweight mouse that had holes in it actually but it has this covering so that you don't feel the holes which personally i never have an issue feeling the holes on a mouse but this is nice because it just makes it more acceptable for everyone else that might be more sensitive to feeling the holes on the mouse so first off one thing that i think that makes this mouse extremely special is these heat treated ptfe feet so these feet feel very 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 similar to a Tiger R2 mouse gate. So I use Tiger R2s on a pretty regular basis. I have them on my Viper Ultimate, and I also have them on my in-game gear XM1. And I think there's one other mouse that I have them on too, but I like them a lot. Tiger R2s and Arc ones I, I don't mind either of them. To me, they're almost interchangeable, but I will say that the Arc 2s are a little bit smoother than the ARC ones, probably a good 10 to 15%. These feel just as good, if not a little better, and they even give you an extra set in the box. So, man, good job. Like, <laughs> seriously, good job. These mouse feet slide so smooth on the desk. Like, Roquette absolutely killed it with whatever supplier that they use or just having these heat-treated PTFE feet these are absolutely perfect for this mouse like you you don't need to replace them these are good enough there's nothing aftermarket that i could recommend that would be better than these mouse feet moving on to the titan optical switches so these i think are a little bit better than the ones on the viper but not by much they're okay if we compare them to like the best mouse clicks i think the best clicks are going to be on the xm1 rgb with those specially tuned kale i think they're kale red mouse clicks so here i'll give you guys a quick sound comparison between these the viper and the kales that i'm talking about in the xm1 and you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below which ones sound the best because personally i'm picking the xm1 So feel wise, I don't think that the Titan Opticals are bad. I like them actually, but I think that sound wise, they're missing a little bit of crispiness. They're okay, I don't mind them, but I wish they were a little bit crispier. It's weird that like for keyboards, we prefer quiet linear switches. And then for mice, we like these loud, er, clicky tactile feeling switches and sounding. So let's talk about the design as well, because that is really, really important. And one reason why I think I like the Burst so much is because it feels not really like a smaller XM1, but it feels like a shorter XM1. So we got the XM1 here and the Burst Pro is a little bit shorter than the XM1, but it is a very similar um, dimension profile as well, where the back still flares out quite a bit. Not as much as the back of the XM1 because this does flare out just a little bit wider, but in the front, it is a bit more narrow as well, which for me is kind of comfortable because right here, it grooves down just a bit and it's comfortable for like a really nice claw grip just about. And the side buttons on this mouse are really, really easy to reach as well. Like I don't have any problems reaching the sides at all. And they got this nice little texture right here just to give it that little bit more grip. But it's a nice texture, it's not rubberized either, so it doesn't feel like it makes your hands sweat at all, which is something I don't really like about the Razer because with this texture being rubberized, it does tend to make your thumb a little bit sweaty, which is I find kind of weird. The XM1 though, in my opinion, has a little bit of a better coating than the Roquette Burst Pro. This coating, 
I don't hate it, but it's not necessarily the best, but it's okay. I do feel like up top though on the mouse one and two that my fingers do sweat just a little bit because of the coating, but it's not really the end of the world and I don't really mind it too much, but it is kind of grippy too, where the XM1 has just got like this really almost dry, not quite sandpaper like coating, but it's, it's just different. It's an okay coating. I like it because it's very grippy and it doesn't make your hand sweat at all. But the thing about it is that with the XM1, obviously you can see all your handles and stuff on the mouse and the mouse always looks dirty. So this is kind of like a happy medium, um, but preferably I would have liked to see if they use something very similar to the razor coating on their mice. The scroll wheel is very nice as well. Personally, I do like the scroll wheel. It doesn't have like the side click functionality, so I don't really use that ever. So I don't see that as something that I'm looking for in a mouse, but you do have this DPI button here if you need to switch it. But you can also, for the most part, I pretty much always set this as like my play pause button for media. If you don't really switch your DPI very often, I would consider doing that as well. And then in terms of the sensor, this is Rokas Owlai sensor. I had zero issues tracking with it is very similar to the one that they use and i want to say what was it called the kane 200 amo i think that one was also wireless as well now this paracord it's pretty decent it's not the absolute best paracord i've ever used like you can see right there that's kind of where it falls apart is like when you start to get really really close but if you just throw this thing in a mouse bungee it's not bad but i would say that this is probably just like a middle of the road paracord not the best but certainly not the worst and flexible enough where if you just throw it in a mouse bungee it's comfortable to use during gameplay and doesn't really get in the way it's not quite on the level of the xm1 where i would say that that one is a paracord perfected but this one is I would say passable. All in all, I do like the Burst Pro actually. This is gonna be my new main for the foreseeable future for now. The only competition that I see for the Burst Pro for me to potentially replace it as my main would be maybe the Steel Series Aerox, I think it's called the five or six, not the Aerox three, but the five or six with the rival 600 shape. I like that one quite a bit. And then maybe if Endgame Gear released a smaller XM1, I could see that as a potential replacement to this as well. But for the foreseeable future, I'm probably gonna be maining the Burst Pro. Like I like it that much. Even if Rokat wasn't gonna send it to me, I was gonna buy it anyways and try it out. But I'm glad they did because I don't have to pay for it now, but dude, this Burst Pro is no joke. If you can try it out, I would highly recommend you go over to a friend's house that has it, see what they think of it, and try it out for yourself because I like it quite a bit. Like this thing is absolutely fire. But that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoy, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel as well. Again, huge shout out to Rokat for sending out the Burst Pro for review. Interested to see what they come out with in the future. I know they have this one and then I believe the other version that they have is called the Burst Core, which is a little bit cheaper as well. I think that mouse is only like 40 bucks. So if you can't quite afford the $60 that the Burst Pro is, maybe go ahead and check out the Burst Core and see what you think of that one but that's gonna be it i'll see you guys in the next video feel free to drop a comment below or hit me up in my discord as well if you guys have any questions and thanks again for watching see you in the next video
Nine-year-olds getting yelled at by twenty-year-olds. Okay, okay, Kyle. We we need to work together to get this channel on fleek. Yeah, like face cam gets views. Like, face cam gets crazy views. I need 